Biologists are challenging the idea of naturalist Charles Darwin that evolution cannot be observed in real time. They cite evidence from cities where scientists study how animals and plants interact with humans. Species either adapt or face possible extinction. In one example, birds get trapped every year in 7,000 watt beams that shine in New York City to mark the September 11th attacks. Those birds have not evolved to avoid artificial light, but lizards in Puerto Rico cities, Puerto Rican cities, did evolve to better grip concrete and metal surfaces with their feet. Urban ecologist Menno Skildhausen discusses all of this in his new book, Darwin Comes to Town, How the Urban Jungle Drives Evolution. Menno, great to have you on set with us. Thank you. So first of all, explain to us why anyone who's not an ecologist should care about this subject matter and why it's so important to us as a species? Well, it's, it's because cities are becoming the most important ecosystem in the world. We think of nature and ecosystem as, as something that's out there, but cities are growing and basically there's not much nature left as cities expand. So whatever is left of ecosystem is surviving in the cities among us and is also evolving. So we can actually watch evolution shape new ecosystems for the future in our backyards and I think that's something that everybody living in cities should care about. And you go back to Darwin's theory and you talk about evolutions over over hundreds of years if not longer and you are now pointing to the fact that maybe a lot of species can adapt much quicker. It, it is it, and, and, and Darwin uh, thought that evolution could not be observed. He said it, it, we have to wait for, for millions of years for the, the lapse of ages and, and fossils to be able to see it. But since then we've realized that evolution is a much stronger process than uh, Darwin himself thought. And it can actually be, be observed in a matter of years, uh, especially in insects that have short generation times, and which is basically the evolutionary clock speed uh, which is which is uh, very fast in these animals, and you can see them change under your eyes in your own in your own in backyard. Real time. Is, this in real good, time. is this a good thing? Um, it's 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 happening. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's what evolution evolution does. It it adapts to changing conditions. Well, I guess if we're going to all be living in cities, and cities are getting bigger and bigger, and we live farther and further from more natural environments, that does seem to frighten people. Yeah, it does seem to frighten people, and at the same time, nature in cities, as I, as I explain in my book, it's, it's, it's really new, very exciting ecosystems that are shaping uh, from species that have never met each other. Often in the cities, you find all, all these exotic species that come from all over the world and are forming new ways of living with each other in cities, just like humans do, in a way. Uh, and they're adapting to each other and forming a new fresh ecosystem which is which is very exciting to watch and that's why i think the urban ecologist is somebody who's going to have a lot of fun over the next few decades so help us understand the fun that you're having with it that what are you seeing that's exciting to you about the animals that you're learning that would be beneficial to us that we should be excited about too for instance well for instance uh, city pigeons yeah i mean the, the 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 rats of the air we call them sometimes but but they're really exciting animals they're they're originally rock pigeons they live in lived on cliffs in 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 southern europe and they've traded uh, high buildings for cliffs and they're dealing with all the pollution that we throw at them. For example, heavy metals. There's all kinds of uh, heavy metals like zinc and lead flaking off buildings and off lampposts, which produce pollution in the cities. And these, these pigeons, they uh, evolve to get rid of those heavy metals by putting them in their feathers. And you see that the darker feathers are the ones with a lot of melanin in. They're better at absorbing those heavy metals, so they detox themselves simply by uh, having darker feathers. And that's real evolution that you can see happening in the streets. And you learned something about the mice in New York, our also, eating yeah. habits. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. telling. <laughs> it is. Uh, the, the, there's the white-footed mouse, which is being studied by my colleague Jason Munchi South in Fordham University. He's studying these white-footed mice that live in remnants of forest in New York City. They used to live everywhere when the city wasn't there yet, but they're now surviving in Central Park and Prospect Park and some of these bigger city parks. And they're adapting, they're sort of marooned in these islands of forest in the city, and they're adapting to the local conditions. For example, in Central Park, Jason is finding that they're, um, they have genes, they've evolved genes that better allow them to take care of very fatty food because they're, they're, they're feeding on, on leftover and junk food that people leave there. And, and also, 
uh, detox themselves against aflatoxin, which is a toxin that grows on discarded peanuts. So these mice are eating that rather than the stuff they used to eat before. And these populations are adapting, they're evolving to deal with all these new things that they're finding in these parks. Yeah, you can learn a lot from talking to the animals and watching <laughs> what the animals yeah. do. And think it started from you as a little kid looking at bugs. Look at you now. <laughs> yep. Look at you now. Exactly. Thank you very much, Menno. My pleasure. Darwin Comes to Town goes on sale tomorrow wherever you like to buy your books.